Welcome to Divorce Talk with Nicola Beer, a show dedicated to creating change and emotional healing for executives, professionals, and expats in the various stages of marriage breakdown and divorce. Discover insightful strategies to better manage your personal affairs and learn secrets to creating more happiness, love, and success in your life today. Hi, this is Nicola Beer, and I'm so happy you're with me today listening to this episode, which is When does drinking become a problem in a relationship? Now, there are so many reasons why marriages break down, and it's rarely just one. Usually, it's the culmination of events and behaviours that stir up negative feelings. In my practice, alcohol issues come up frequently. Occasionally, it's when a spouse doesn't agree with their partner's drinking for religious reasons. But more often than not, it's the amount someone drinks, how frequently they drink and their behaviour whilst under the influence. So when does drinking become a problem in a marriage? Is it when the drinker recognises they have a dependency? Is it when the non-drinker says that they have a problem? Is it when the drinking is interfering with the relationship? Alcohol consumption in my coaching has been linked to an increase in angry outbursts, aggression, arguments. It's also blamed or used as an excuse for infidelity and being out of control. Others mention how drinking has caused their sex life to dwindle, a lack of interest in family activities. And even for the happy drunks, it can also result in depression. So if drinking is recognised as a problem by one in a couple, what I generally see is the couple will argue over the difference between social drinking, being social and a drinking problem. And this is where it becomes tricky. Couples can get involved with what the right limit is and what the right limit isn't. And this can have couples just go round and round in circles because if there's a difference of opinion, you're not going to be able to break that and move forward. So is yours or your spouse's drinking interfering with your relationship? Is someone close to you going through this? Have you tried discussing it and getting nowhere? Well, I really hope today's episode is going to be helpful to you. We often think that it will be obvious if someone has a drinking problem. But actually, in reality, that just isn't true. It's very hard to tell the line between what is a drinking problem and what, what's not. Janice and Robert, names changed, have been married for 17 years before they came to me. They have two boys. Robert works as a telecom engineer and Janice was a full-time mum. Until her youngest son was three, she was happy being a full-time mum at home. And then she started working full-time as an administrator in an office. And when they first started dating, they, they used to go out for drinks on the weekend or stay in and share a bottle of wine and watching a movie. Drinking once or twice in the week and weekends was normal for them before and after Janice's pregnancies. But after Janice's second child was born, Robert was working away more and more, and when he was home, he would be in the office late, or working at home late. So she was responsible for the running of the household, getting the kids to school, making their lunches and dinners, doing their homework, putting them to bed, doing the laundry for everyone. And by the end of the day, she was just exhausted. And so to reward herself and to help her relax and unwind, she would enjoy a few glasses of wine before bed. Over time, the amount she drank and the frequency increased until she was drinking every night and on the weekends would start mid-afternoon, sometimes even lunchtime. Robert didn't say anything at first because he knew how hard she worked. And he didn't want to seem unappreciative. On the times he had tried to tackle it with her, she would attack him for everything that he wasn't doing and what a lousy husband and father he was. And so he just avoided it. He noticed that the more she drank, the more angry she became over the smallest things. And so he just chose not to speak to her when she was drinking. To switch off completely, he'd be either be in front of his laptop or his TV. And so the communication was breaking down at a rapid rate. Janice felt even more lonely because of this and stressed with the busy schedule and the lack of support 
that she started reaching for the wine as soon as she got in from work. It helped her to relax and get through the evening routine. And this very quickly became her way of functioning. The wine was used to de-stress and cope. By the time Robert got home, she would always be tipsy. Sometimes she would be moody with him, other times desire him. Either way, he felt numb. He longed for his old wife back when she used to be fully present with him and the children. He was lost at what to do, as whenever he brought anything up, she would fly off the handle and attack him for overreacting. A bottle of wine is nothing, she would argue. The French do this all the time. I deserve a treat. I work so hard. You do nothing. You drive me to this, she would argue. He noticed, after he did have an argument with her or he did bring it up, that her drinking would increase. And the stress of him watching her, she said, would make her drink even more because she felt that she'd have to justify drinking even more. So she created stress and drama so that she could drink. Robert then found himself beginning to hate alcohol. He wanted to distance himself from it completely. Other activities that they used to do with friends, he wanted to avoid. He couldn't control her, so he didn't want to be around her. They began living parallel lives, barely communicating, and when they did, it was always about the children, never about thoughts or feelings. And that's when they came to me, and they found solutions in reconnecting, in finding about what each other love and what each other need to feel happy, what each other need to feel secure in their relationship, what each other need to get through the day-to-day and break these habits. So... How do you know when someone's drinking can be a problem? Well, according to Psychology's magazine, it's if two people want to have a life together and alcohol is interfering with the desire to have a life together, that's when it becomes a problem. I believe that part of the problem is also caused, caused by Western culture. If you think about it, alcohol is an alcohol problems and alcoholics are generally associated with people sleeping on park benches, people drinking in the morning, people being homeless, on TV. It's always about people who are stealing to feed their habit. You never see someone with a drinking problem that's an MD of a company or that's a functioning adult. It's always someone whose life is in ruins. Actually, it can be a problem way before it gets to those extremes. So I also think in society, we, alcohol was romanticised. It's shown as the, the cure to find love and give you confidence. It's the way to de-stress. It's the way to get over an ex. It's the way to deal with any difficulty that life throws. And there are some couples who come to me with issues that have nothing to do with alcohol. And yet they find after a few drinks that in their issues and discussions become more explosive, more intense. And so until they fix the relationship, they often decide, right, we're going to quit or we're going to set limits on their drinking. Many, though, are not ready to admit that alcohol may be a factor because they worry that it will mean they'll have to give up their lifestyle or they're not sure what their life will be like without it. So it's about deciding as a couple how to support each other and make positive changes for the individual and for the relationship in a way that increases happiness and love. Now let me talk about Tim. Tim came to me because his wife had asked him to as a last resort. He hadn't been aware of how how unhappy his wife had been and he wanted to rescue the relationship. Tim regularly drank wine and whiskey when he got in and He was the MD of an investment firm. Drinking for him was just part of the way he functioned. He believed it helped him sleep. He argued that drinking made him feel good at his job. And as he was still able to work out, he thought it was beneficial or complementary to his health. He couldn't see the impact that it was having on his relationships with his wife and his children until his wife walked out. And then this shifted everything for him. And... He hadn't realised that he had unintentionally put the business and the drinking before his family. So together we made several changes to his lifestyle, starting with a change in his diet, to the ways um, he could break the habit, to new things he could do, 
to hypnosis to install new habits. And him and his wife started having date nights for the first time with no alcohol and decided that they were going to have more family time, which really turned his life, life around. And this lack of awareness he blames on the drinking because he didn't pick up on his family's feelings about this. So when does drinking become a problem in a relationship? Well, it becomes a problem in a relationship when it's affecting your togetherness. It's affecting your life together. And this can be whether it causes arguments, aggression, depression, a lack of intimacy, shutdown, avoidance. These are all some of the things that many people struggle with. And they often feel stuck, not knowing what to do. And so what can you do if yours or your spouse's drinking is causing a problem in your relationship? Well, I would strongly recommend that you get support, whether it's private coaching, therapy, or hypnotherapy, or getting advice from Alcoholics Anonymous and Al-Anon, which is for partners of or family members of alcoholics, because they have useful practical advice devised from helping thousands of people through it. Now, according to Dr. Mooney, the co-author of the recovery book, he argues that the amount and frequency of alcohol isn't a good measure as to whether it becomes a problem in relationships. But for many couples, they find it very useful to have a guide. So you can get a guide if you look at drinkaware.co.uk, which has guidelines for what's healthy and what's not healthy. Now, whilst all this is true, I must say there are some relationships that are built around alcohol and the relationships stay healthy if both continue drinking at the same rate. It's when one stops drinking or one reduces their drinking and the other one continues that there's often arguments in relationships. So what not to do if you're affected by your spouse's drinking? Whatever you decide to do, just don't make an ultimatum. Ultimatums never work in relationships. And I'm going to be talking about ultimatums soon, so stay tuned for that. If your spouse is drinking and it's causing you a problem, remember that you cannot force them to stop as much as you may want to and as painful it is to watch. All you can do is get support for you and you definitely don't need to suffer in silence. The reason that I care about this so much, and you might be able to tell about this through my passion of me sharing this all with you, is that I've been there myself and I've also seen alcohol destroy many, many families and lives. Eight years ago, I drank every night for months on end. I falsely believed alcohol helped me sleep, function better, and was a good thing in my life. I'd come to rely on it to help me unwind, de-stress, and in truth found it hard to break the pattern. I also had stomach problems and IBS and believed that it used to block out the physical pain. But it was affecting my health my relationships, and my self-esteem. Thank goodness I researched it, got support, and can now take it or leave it and only drink occasionally. To say the first step is the hardest is a huge understatement. Acknowledging that on some level it's causing a problem to you or to your relationship life is a massive but rewarding first step. One I have so much love and respect for that I... I'm giving away for anyone who is willing to take the step to reach out for help, a complimentary session, and in the session we'll look at ways to support you, what resources are available, and how you can continue your healing and changing journey. And I'll do this, as I mentioned, for free, because I remember feeling like a total loser, a failure, like there was something seriously wrong with me. The truth is, though, like sugar, cigarettes, caffeine and other drugs. Alcohol is addictive because of the physical changes, the physical chemical changes in the brain. So there's nothing wrong with you if you have a habit you find hard to break. It stands to reason if you consume an addictive substance over time that you're highly likely to become addicted on some level to the feel-good factor that it produces. So clearly it's not a character flaw And for that reason, willpower alone rarely works against the physical body and the emotions we are often trying to avoid by consuming substances in the first place. I was blocking out the emptiness I felt living alone in Dubai. 
after my breakup and the fear of losing my job and money in the financial crisis. So I had to deal with the fear, I had to deal with the emptiness, I had to deal with the loneliness in order to be able to move forward. Now every situation is unique, every individual is unique, every relationship is unique. And what works for some in my practice doesn't work for others. So that's why I really believe that a holistic approach is important. A tailored approach is important. And I've researched this thoroughly and applied so many techniques on myself and helping those I work with to become free of whatever habit or addictive pattern is showing up. And admitting it is the first step. So if you have someone close to you, or if you yourself are going through this, then all you need to do is email me at nicola at purepeacecoaching.com or go to my website www.purepeacecoaching.com, click on contact us and reach out to me and we'll schedule a session to get you some resources to help change your life in more positive ways. I'll happily and pleasurably do this with you and for you. Well, I hope you found something useful today. From my heart to yours, have an amazing week ahead. Thank you for listening to Divorce Talk with Nicola Beer. If you have enjoyed the program, please leave a rating and review on iTunes so more people dealing with marriage breakdown and divorce get the support they need. If you want more great free resources, such as secrets to a happier relationship, moving on fast after divorce, or tips on parenting through divorce, be sure to visit www.purepeacecoaching.com today.